power is your ability to make shit happen. Hello and welcome back. Architect Nation, Enix Sears here. And this is the show where you'll discover tips, strategies, and secrets for running an architectural practice that allows you to do your best work more often and actually go on the journey of what we call the free architect. Because isn't that what we all want anyways? The ability to have agency and more freedom in our life. Today is another dual episode. I'm joined by our Director of Consulting and Business Transformation, Mr. Ryan Willard. Ryan, welcome. Pleasure. Thank you very much, Enoch. Today, we're discussing an important topic that you've probably dealt with before, which is how to manage overwhelm. And this is something that can affect you as a business owner. It can afflict you as a business owner. It's going to be afflicting your team members. Heck, my wife doesn't work out of the side of the home, and I know it afflicts her. It's the idea of having too much to do and all the stress and all the anxiety and all the feelings of burnout and everything that goes along with that. Have you ever had trouble finding an architectural photographer who could really make your project shine? Today's episode is sponsored by renowned architectural photographer Tobin Davies. Tobin Davies eliminates the hassle by traveling to your location to create the stunning photographs your project deserves, and we are happy to support him here on the Business of Architecture podcast. Visit TobinDavies.com or BayawayPhotos.com to book a shoot in less than 10 minutes and ask about the special offer for Business of Architecture podcast listeners. Again, that's TobinDavies.com or BayawayPhotos.com. First of all, let's jump into the specific problems that we're looking at here. Great. I'll start off here with um, the first problem we've identified here is when business owners are ambitious or they've set themselves some goals, at least they've got some goals, that's the first thing. Um, But it's not uncommon that we'll see business owners finding that the energy that's needed to chase these big results ends up becoming way too much and they end up experiencing burnout, overwhelm, fatigue, there might be various types of anxiety. And if this is happening over a longer period of time, we might start to see resignation, bitterness even coming coming forth. Exactly. And we can we can categorize chasing results as sort of fitting into two camps. So number one, there's chasing the results of getting ourselves out of scarcity. So today with our design council, which is our highest group of clients that we work with, we talked about the idea that when we start a business, oftentimes we start it out of scarcity. We're in scarcity, meaning we're just worried. We're worried about losing projects. We're worried about not having enough money. And so all that worry, that pressure, that fear drives us to push and to push and to push and to push and to push. And And we keep on pushing and pushing and pushing. As a matter of fact, I just saw a Facebook post the other day from Lance Psycho that we've had here on the podcast. He was being given an award for the most influential businessman in his area where he lives. And he said, here here was my secret. It was getting up every day and effing grinding. Getting up every day and effing grinding. And then still effing grinding, like all the time. So we can see that scarcity is something that can that can push us forward. That's certainly a result. And then there's another kind of result, which is like, hey, I'm not necessarily trying to get myself out of scarcity anymore. I'm making decent money, but I'm getting for abundance. I'm driving myself into abundance. And as business owners, as we're reaching for these results, let's face it, these results, they take energy. It takes energy to do this. It takes energy to get up. It takes energy to walk into uncomfortable situations. It may take energy as a business owner to do things that you're not naturally comfortable with. Like for instance, do business development, make sales calls, work on marketing materials, or create content around what you do as a firm owner. And so when we're working in something that's not in our natural genius, it's naturally going to deplete us more because it's not going to be as natural. It's not going to bring these positive feelings of joy. It's going to feel a lot of times like a slog. And so what can ends up happening, especially when we're in the scarcity side of things, is we take on so much work. We have so many things to do. This burnout can just begin to deplete our system. We're running around with high cortisol levels. Uh, we're, 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 we're up for an early heart attack. Uh, when we get off of work, our mind is running a mile a minute. We can't even sit still at the beach because we're worried even on vacation. We're worried and thinking about you know, what we're not doing right now because I need to be productive. So something here is we're talking about this problem, which is like, The energy needed to chase big results is too much. 
and you end up feeling burned out, fatigued, overwhelmed, and bitter. And these big results could either be getting out of scarcity or getting into abundance. Hmm. Problem number two that we look at is, that we're often blind to, is other areas of life suffer or you stop pushing hard so that they don't. Yeah, absolutely. So there's definitely the, you know, part of the the grind culture, if you like, is that we have people who will, they're just working, 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 working all the time. And just logically, this doesn't leave space for you to be able to bring energy into other areas of your life. And what does that look like? Well, it looks like the the husband who's constantly at work and when they get home, the wife nags, moans, complains, where are you? Why have you been here? He's not getting acknowledged at home, but he gets acknowledged when he's, when he's working. He gets pissed off. They go to bed, pissed off at each other. The next day he goes back into work, and, but he gets acknowledged at work and there's results there's making there's making money um but the but the the marriage is dwindling the relationship the intimacy is disappearing the family life is disappearing he doesn't want to go home anymore okay we see this kind of scenario play all the time we see the scenario where um, business owners are unhealthily inside of their businesses at the sacrifice of everything of everything else and in the relationship, people, particularly men, men might kind of just expect their wives to deal with this. I'm bringing home the bacon. I'm bringing home the money. You need to um, you know, do fulfill on your role. And I'm going to carry on. You know, I've got to work hard because I'm providing for everything. And if that kind of thing goes unchecked and the relationship is losing its intimacy and there's no communication and there's resentment building up and there's bitterness and there's complaint and there's nagging and there's aggression etc etc what will happen those relationships end they'll come to a sudden a sudden ending so we have relationships we have what that would have the the impact of that on a family so if you had children you know, growing more distance from your kids, not being able to see them grow up, not being able to be involved in key moments in their in their lives, not being able to take time out to help them learn valuable lessons, not being able to be there uh, for support, that has an impact on the relationship that you'll have long term with your with your children. And then we've got what happens to your own physical health, the amount of stress you were just alluding to there, the amount of stress that working and particularly a particular kind of work where you're just stressed you're stressed out and you're not getting the results right that's the shitty work that's the stuff that's overwhelming okay when you're working hard and you're not getting the results that you want and you're not enjoying it anymore okay that's when that's when we, that's when we really, really starts becoming problematic and we see this again in architecture people they fall out of love with what it is that they're doing the job the the business becomes a misery um this takes its toll like you you are now producing all sorts of toxins in the body you won't have time to be looking after yourself going to the gym your if your relationship is starting to fall apart you're going to retreat into comfort habits to make yourself feel better in the short term eating lots of sugar or binging on pizzas or whatever kind of thing that you might be doing in you know that might turn into something excessive i'm talking about just doing it once in a while we're talking about you know this this becoming kind of habitual stuff you go out of shape now you're putting more pressure onto your body because you're putting crap inside of it etc etc so we can really start to see how the these when this becomes out of balance how the rest of our life can start to suffer now what some people end up doing here is they might recognize that and they're like right okay we're working this hard as a problem i'm not going to do it anymore i refuse and then they throw out all of their goals and ambitions with it so they end up throwing they just they just settle they're just like sorry i'm not going to try and find another way of doing this (laughs) But it's it's like okay, and then I'm going to stop doing that. Who needs to be rich, anyways? I mean, come on. Sod it. I'll be happy. 
right? From personal experience, here's what it's looked like for me. We have a busy house. We have five kids at home. My wife homeschools. Plus, they have extracurricular activities. We have a son who's in swimming. He's actually going to public school. He's swimming on the swim team. We have other kids who are involved in drama, so we take them to play practice. We have church activities we take them to. Every single week, I take one of my kids out on a date night where we go out. We have ice cream or we go play at the video arcade store. Carly as well, she'll have things where she'll go out with friends. So what ends up happening is by the time it's time for us to go to bed, we're just so exhausted and tired that we just look at each other and turn out the lights and we're just like, oh, it's time to go to bed now. Can't wait. And then we wake up early in the morning, we get after it again, go to the gym, wake up early, five o'clock, out exercising. So the impacts that this has on a relationship is that even you can be the best friends in the world, you can be the best, just have the most incredible soul connection. But if that soul connection isn't actually nurtured over time, if it's not watered, if it's not taken well care of, if it's not if it's not given its proper attention, then you start to drift apart and you don't even realize it. You don't even know it. And now the impacts of drifting apart are you as a man, what I discovered for myself is I actually start to feel more lonely. I may not even recognize the loneliness that I'm feeling. And so subconsciously, I can actually try to pour myself more into work and withdraw more from my family. Now, the impacts of this over time can be devastating. They can lead to divorce. They can lead to estranged kids that never really got to know us very well. At the, the least case scenario, we can finally get to retirement where we have more time and find out we're kind of living with a stranger. Mm-hmm. So this is a real world example just from my own experience, how the stress and overwhelm of being a business owner can easily flow over into the evenings, can easily flow over into a sense of overwhelm that then impacts in a very, very real way my relationship with my wife. Now, let's say say working out in the morning as well. Again, if I'm feeling overwhelmed, if I'm feeling burned out, I'm not going to bring the same energy and intensity to the gym. I'm going to show up to the gym and I'm already going to be tired. I'm going to want to just sort of lollygag through my exercises, just kind of half-ass it like, okay, I'll lift, lift a little bit here, lift a little bit there. This has impact on the body. This has impact on my health. So this brings us nicely then to the to the third problem really is that people are asleep to the reality that all areas of life impact each other. Beautiful. Beautiful. So just consider as you're listening to this podcast, have you really considered how all of the areas of life actually tie together? They feed on each other, they benefit each other or they detract from each other. So for instance, like when my wife and I we're both we're both on the outspoken end. Let's put it this way. We're both we're both uh, first children, uh, and so oftentimes we would butt heads. And when we butt heads, and when we argue, it can escalate very quickly to where we're both getting our feelings hurt. We come to an irreconcilable kind of argument, and we're just like, fine. So we just stop the conversation because we know it's not going anywhere good. Now, for me, this can stew on my mind like I'm like, oh, just feelings of like, I did it again, man. I'm, I'm the terrible husband. How come I can never get this right? Is this relationship ever going to... The mind, the mind starts churning on all this negative self-talk. I go to bed. Now, this again, this depletes my energy. I go to work the next day. I'm trying to be present for our clients, for what I'm doing for my team. But in the back of my head, I know I had this big argument or fight with Carly last night. And then this impacts how I'm able to show up as a business person. So again, another example of one area of life, in this case, my relationship, massively, massively impacts my business ability in the other area. So this is a real problem that you are asleep to the truth about how these different areas actually connect and impact each other. Mm-hmm. It's, it's interesting how relationships can impact um, your performance at work or your performance in doing something. I'm reminded of a, of a story of, a, of an event that happened in my own life, not with me, but with um, a friend of mine and we were playing in a band, and this were we were young young men at the time, so kind of relationships and women and all that kind of stuff was was probably a priority. That was the probably that was that was, that was the thing that we were you mainly your fo- only priority. That it was, was the only main, purpose in life. Our main focus. Your so main that, focus. All you lived, lived, slept, and breathed for. That's what we. That's the whole reason why we were in a band. <laughs> that's and, right. <laughs> that's and, the only reason why you were in a band. <laughs> <laughs> the women and I remember like it. 
I remember the lead singer of the band was dating this uh, very attractive woman, girl at the time, and something happened in their relationship. Something that it wasn't working on. He came, he came to the to the rehearsal, and he was just his energy was so poor, like he wasn't engaged, and the music was just like he wasn't giving it his all, and and then he forgot the lyrics, and he ne- I've never seen him forget the lyrics before. Never, and you, everyone just stopped. You're like, well, how many times have we done this song? It was, and you could tell it was just obviously clearly, really, really burning, burning a hole in his in his mind and what what he was thinking about. And I remember later on that evening we went to the went to the pub to talk about it and you know what was going on. Da, 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 clearly needed some some. Uh, I think our our therapy at the time was probably drinking. Um, and I remember when he came to paying the bill, um, he was tried to use his debit card or whatever, and he forgot the number on his debit card. Mm. <laughs> I, and I just bring that up just as an as an example of you know I'm sure we've all got periods in our life where we've we've had a been in a relationship or we've had that kind of argument or something's happened that it's just really really diminished our focus, really diminished our focus. Yeah, it's destabilizing. And it's easy in a relationship to sort of detach ourselves and sedate this. In other words, kind of tell ourselves a story that it doesn't matter. I don't care. I'm gonna I'm gonna live a little bit more distantly from my from my significant other. Mm-hmm. And the truth is, is what the problem we're pointing to here. The truth is, it actually does matter mm-hmm. in a big in a big way. If yeah. you're if you're seeking high performance. So problem number four is as a result. You live a life as a one-dimensional human being. What do we mean by that? It means that you may be super successful in business, but you're broke and you're out of shape. You have a lot of extra body weight and your relationship is, I mean, it's, it's not great. It's mediocre. That's a one-dimensional life. Crushing, and, crushing it in one area. Well, let's flip it around. Let's say, you're, let's say marriage is on fire, but your bank account is struggling. Your business is struggling. And your health is not good. Again, carrying a lot of excess body weight. You don't like the way you look in the mirror. Those pants that used to fit you well, well, you've worn them a little too long. You shouldn't be wearing them anymore because they're past their prime and you're past your prime as well. So this is what it looks like when we live as a one-dimensional human being, isolated and believing that all of these areas of life don't interconnect and don't Mm -hmm. contribute to one another. And it's unsustainable. When we look at this, how long can that one area that's working carry on working when all these other areas are being neglected? We see it with business owners. We see it with people who they've got massive success in their business, but they've neglected their health. They've neglected their relationships. They've neglected their relationship with God, their faith, or their universe, or their their sense of spiritual entity if you like or their connection with a, a greater power and then all of a sudden they get they get massively sick that's it business business is going to be is going to go downhill or you die <laughs> and then all of the areas that's the end that's the end game so i i, I think it's it's easy to kind of put all your eggs into one basket and kind of just get and to you and to just remain where you're comfortable but these other areas of life when they when they're neglected they will eventually start to undermine the one area that you do have success in if you're continually ignoring them absolutely Continu- and i've i've heard a lot of i've heard i mean you watch youtube you look at some of this business advice out there there are people who will say you you can't have it all like you're either going to have, you're going to be super wealthy and you're going to have a marriage that's terrible or you're going to put all your effort into your wife, your spouse or your husband, if you know, if the case may be. But you can't have it all. You can only have one area and not all of it. We stand for something different here. Yeah. Like we, we believe that actually, as a matter of fact, if you look at your baseline as a human being, let's say that we have a man who's very successful or a woman who's successful in some endeavor, but let's say on the home front, her relationship with her husband is terrible. Um, let's say that you know she's not keeping herself fit. So she's a superstar in business, but all the others of life aren't very commendable. We see this a lot with like 
ultra wealthy guys. They're going through one relationship after another. They can never stay with the same woman. You know, their their kids say, oh yeah, he's he's an alcoholic loser. You know, he's snorting up cocaine to keep himself go, 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 but he has massive business results. So we can see this. We can see this lopsidedness. So let's just consider that same guy. What would happen if that guy actually had an on-fire committed relationship with the woman who loved and supported him and they were intimate and close together? Like, would his business results go up? Would they go down? No, because that would serve as a source of fuel for him. They go mm-hmm. up. So this brings us over here. I'm going to jump across to the possibility, which is simply this. All areas of life are sources of energy for you, and they actually fuel each other. Imagine this this kind of vortex, this this virtuous cycle where each of these things, because your relationship, your your romantic relationship is so satisfying and so fulfilling that you show up more powerfully in business. And because you're showing up more powerfully in business, you have the time now to put more energy and effort into working out. And because you work out every single day, your endorphins are higher, you feel more energy and excitement to be the best version of yourself for your for your significant other. And same thing for your business member and your team. This is what we mean by the virtuous mm-hmm. cycle. So that's Absolutely. possibility one. Possibility number two. Possibility number two, all areas of your life expand and support each other. So they actually start growing into each other. And we could see this quite logically, for example, if you've got business results, okay, and perhaps there's a way of looking at this as well where some of the, some areas of your life actually, you know, if you get them set up first, then it makes it easier to set up the other areas of your life. So for example, I think it's probably easier, not impossible, but it's easier if you've got good money to be healthy. Why? Well, because it's easier for you to go out and shop and buy great food. You can go and eat at a healthy restaurant. You can hire a personal trainer. You can hire a gym membership. You can structure your life in a way where you've got more time to be able to allocate to fitness and and health. Um, if you've got fitness, if you've got your fitness and your health, you're feeling great, you're energized, you're making money as a man, you're going to be more attractive. It's going to be easier for you to be able to sustain a relationship. You've now got energy there to be able to, to put into a relationship, to attract somebody who's, who's, who's there for you. You have all those three set up, they're working great. Now you've got a, now you've got a, a, a stabilized foundation to be inquiring with your spirituality or your higher purpose or what it is that you want to be doing as a leader on on earth you'll naturally start expanding outside of yourself and looking for you know it's a it's a good foundation to have a deeper inquiry about what your life is being used for okay and these these and again it, you, you could do it another way I'm, i i know if you if you haven't got um say finances but you've got a good body you've got good health great because now you've got some energy you've got you've got good energy to be able to go and put into building out building a business applying focus so these things are very deeply interwoven and interconnected and su- actually support each other you'll also find things like if you start exercising let's say discipline in the area of the of your body or doing something that you've never done before out there, that it starts to stretch and push you in the area of your, in your business. You might start looking at what you've started to accomplish as a discipline with your exercise routine and go, well, if I can do it there, then I can bring it into my business. I know for me personally, I've always used um, the, still now, my commitment to not drinking alcohol or consuming intoxicants or anything like that. There's a, a kind of Buddhist um, principle that I, I took very much to heart and, and live by. I always use that um, as, a, as a kind of source of energy and power of like, well, look, you made, a, you made a choice. You made a big lifestyle decision and choice and changed. And you went through having to enroll other people into it and to, you know, maintaining relationships and pulling yourself out of a culture where that was very normal etc etc but i did it great and it's there and it serves me as a source of source of power and as time goes on i can see the bigger and bigger benefits of having made that commitment so so go for it 
Possibility number three is that you're fully awake to the reality that all areas of life impact each other. Possibility number four is you live the four-dimensional have-it-all life. Amazing. Yeah, so imagine having a 4D life where all of these areas are operating at a high level. We've got yeah, the physics. It's, I, I, do, I do believe, Ryan, in what I found in my life. Like, there are seasons. I have seen that there are seasons. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, for this season, period of time, I'm going to be focusing more on my business. Yeah. Or for this season, I'm going to be focusing more on my relationship with my wife. So mm-hmm. this is important, too, to let our significant others know and just understand for ourselves, are we in a season where we're going to shift the focus to something just because we need to double down? We need to get that iner- inertial, like, like terminal velocity to escape? I know. Uh, so a lot of times when architectural practices start up in the first five years, five years, they feel like they're in this sort of like unbalanced state where they're having to put inordinate amounts of energy into that. What I would caution our listeners about, it is so easy to forget that that was once just a season and now it becomes a lifetime. So typically what we find is it's rare for people who focus, decide to pour everything into the business. You have now built up a habit. And so what, what once was something that you said you were going to focus on it for a year becomes two years, becomes three years, becomes four years, becomes five years. And now you're that one-dimensional person where maybe your business even isn't even doing that great mm. and you're living a lopsided life. Yeah. So what's the, what are the principles here? First principle is you got to understand we need to really recognize at a deep level that all areas of life are connected. How we are in one area of life is how we are in another area of life and they impact and influence each other. If you're a business owner, you know that when your team member is having difficulties at home, they're going to show up very differently with the way that they show up at work. And we've had this with members of our design council dealing with team members who are coming in with their baggage about you know drama or things that are happening in their household that certainly are very difficult to deal with. But now you're bringing all that stuff into work. It's affecting that particular domain as well. Now let's define power. This is principle number two. Principle number two around managing overwhelm, because that's the topic of the podcast today, is power is your simply defined as, the way we're using it is, because we've used that term here several times, is your ability to make shit happen. Now this can happen one of two ways. Number one, you power through the uncomfortable thing because you have energy. So because your relationship's going well, because you're working out, because you're feeling healthy, that when you're faced something in business that you don't really like to do, you're like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to do this. Just let's get through it and do it because you have that energy. So that's number one. This is the ability to have power. The second kind of power that happens is because you actually start feeling good about these things, you can bring that positive emotion even more fully into what you're doing, into your activities to get better results. So these are the two ways that power, the ability to make shit happen, to get stuff done, can manifest by making sure that you're magnifying that power in your life and then directing it into these four key quadrants. Mm -hmm. A a, a little bit on to expand there on power and this ability to make shit happen, right? Power we're defining here as your ability to produce the results in your life that you want to have happen. So your ability, we could even relate this back to our word, so those of us, people who have listened to the episodes we've done on integrity before, and certainly for the BOA clients, when we talk about integrity, we talk about the power that comes from being your word. Imagine where you've got this power where you say something and it happens, because that's, that's how you relate to your word, right? You say something, let there be light and there was light. It's that kind of, you speaking things into existence. Right? And that's part of the power that we have of human beings that we don't realize that we actually have, that we can create things through our word. We can start things in conversation. We can start to have in them. As a, when we start living a life where we're speaking things into existence, we've got an idea. We've got an idea for results. There's a direction we want to go. We start talking about it. We start speaking about it. We start telling other people about it and it happens. That's exciting. That is exciting. exciting. That is exciting, Ryan. So we just defined power. Second principle here to understand is all areas of life either contribute to or detract from your power. So if we look at the idea that 
We're out for results, some results. That's why we're in business. That's why we're in relationship. We want to get some results. That your power is equal to your ability to get those results or not. And that these four areas of life, these four quadrants that we'll be talking about and we'll identify here very clearly, they can either contribute to or detract from your power. And principle number four is simply this. Routines determine your habits and your habits determine your destiny. You are what you repeatedly do. If you just go to the gym every January for the next 10 years, because by the end of January, who wants to go to the gym anyways, right? We make that awesome, what do you call it, New Year's resolution that then wanes by January. This is why the business model of a fitness franchise is so profitable (laughs) because they're profiting on this human tendency to want to start something out with power and then eventually wane and not do it. So the key here is that if you want to have power in all areas of your life, the key to do that is through routines. And when routines happen again and again and again, which is the very definition of a routine, it becomes a habit. And when something becomes a habit, then it doesn't require as much energy to do that thing. So what you can see here is you start to see an increase in power, aka results, because of the habits that we take on and the habits that we do. This is how we can get into a virtuous cycle. I want to to add a little bit there about this idea of habits and habit formation. And there's lots of reports and studies that have done about how long it takes to establish a habit. I think I've probably nowadays what I've what I've seen is it's about 60 days. So you'll see other studies that will say it's around about 90 days. But there's this idea of habit gravity that when we first start trying to build a new habit, there's some kind of gravity, there's resistance to it. There's something pulling the actions back. And if we think about it like gravity, in order to escape the Earth's gravity, for example, there needs to be a kind of sustained escape velocity, which is time. And it's time and energy mm. that we need to that we need to put into a certain kind of habit in order for it to become a uh, a, you know, a certain kind of routine in order for it to become established as a habit. And, you know, when we've, when we've escaped the habit gravity, this is where we're now floating. It becomes a lot easier to sustain the routines. In fact, it almost becomes automatic. And this might be the process of where it's now embedded as a habit. You just automatically do that thing. You automatically get up at half past six in the morning without thinking anymore and do your exercise. Or it's a little bit easier. Yeah. <laughs> well, it does. It, it becomes it, these things can become addictive, right? So the the idea is that you're going to be addicted to something, something. We're all addicted to something. You're either addicted to success, or you're addicted to failure. You're addicted to positive self talk. You're addicted to negative self talk. You're addicted to, you know, pornography, or you're addicted to a wonderful relationship with your wife. You're addicted to drugs or you're addicted to the highness of just being alive and walking through nature and seeing the beautiful nature around us. So the question is, as you're looking at this idea, how do you want to choose, how do you want to, what kind of habits do you want to build? And one of the core foundational things that we teach here at Business of Architecture is a personal operating system, meaning that it's not just a business operating system, smart practice, but backing up smart practice as a, as a business operating system is a personal operating system that's powered by what we call the core four. So core four meaning core four areas of life, defined as body, being, balance, and business. Ryan, explain for us what these four different areas are. When we say body, being, balance, and business, what do we mean? I think body is probably fairly straightforward to understand, and it's everything that's in the domain of our physical body. So this is going to be our health, and this might include us looking after ourselves with an exercise routine. Um, It would certainly include the fuel that we put inside of it. What kind of food are we eating and consuming? What habits do we have around uh, our food? Are we binge eating certain things? Are we indulging in sugar? Are we starving ourselves? Are we not eating eating enough? Um, It also might include things like looking after illnesses or injuries that you might have. 
Um, it might include things like rest and recuperation and your ability to take sleep and take actual time, time out and give yourself that period of time to rejuvenate. So everything that's in the world of your physical being, your physical body, is what we would consider the body. The balance, this is more to do with relationships and more to do with relationships, A, with your family, so with your spouse, your wife, your children. Um, if you don't have children, perhaps it's your parents, um, your siblings, um, and also your friends and your wider community. And it also includes a relationship with yourself and actually having time to do things that are important for you, hobbies that you once pursued, interests that you like to nourish yourself with, long walks out in nature that give you a sense of, of well-being. Okay, so that's the whole world of balance. That's everything to do really with relationships from friends, family, and it also includes yourself, and that includes interests and hobbies. Then we move on to um, being. Now, this is probably the more, the more, one of probably the most important one actually, and possibly the one that's most difficult to talk about. So, I'll often say that being is really about your relationship with something greater than you. It doesn't have to be religious, though if you've got a religious framework that you follow, perfect. Okay, because it will often mean looking at that, at that framework and your relationship and how you've been exercising a relationship with God, with your higher self, with the organizing mystery of the universe, whatever language you want to put around it, what are you doing in this part of your life? How much time do you spend in contemplation? How much time do you spend in solitude? How much time do you spend asking, who am I? Or inquiring? How much time do we spend here actually digging into our own values and our own leadership and considering our own legacy? What is it that we want to leave behind in life? Okay, what am I contributing to, to humanity? So everything in that sphere of, of contribution to something or a relationship to something which is greater than just you and starting you to see, you know, starting to see and experience a, a dissolving of your own ego boundary, if you like, is what we might consider under being. And exercises, you know, things, activities that might be related to that, meditation, contemplation, prayer, faith groups, discussing re religious and spiritual texts, being with spiritual friends, being with spiritual communities, being mindful, etc. And then finally, we've got the domain of business, which is basically everything that we talk about here at Business of Architecture, from your, your career, your fulfillment in your career, the money that you're bringing home, the money that you've got, available for your team members, the money that you've got for your family, the profit that you're making, protecting the profit. Okay, that, that one we could go into for, as you know, we have been going in over, over it for the last 10 years of podcasts. Beautiful. So here's the thing. The core four is not a solution that will disappear your overwhelm. So the core four is something that goes hand in hand. In other words, the core four habits. So to be very specific here at Business of Architecture, the personal operating system that you would learn as part of smart practice would be to involve specific habits around each one of these areas. So for instance, in my, in my balance area, I go on a weekly date night with my wife Carly, and I take one of my kids out on a date every single week. This is great. I love it. They love it. It, it serves as a source of passion, a source of excitement, a source of a bit of a reward at the end of a long day. And so that's how I manifest my balance. Now, when we look at the core four, what we have is we have habits and we have challenges. So there's something else that we're not going to delve into today called the challenge-based lifestyle, which is, yeah, we get our habits in these four core areas moving ahead, and then we set up little challenges around these areas. Okay? So, for instance, my wife and I are going on, we've, we've signed up for a couple's retreat that we're going on this particular year, we've signed up to a mastermind where we're going to be focusing on our relationship. And as part of that, 
we're traveling. And so that's one of my challenges. It's not something I'm going to do every single year, but it's a one-off thing to move ahead this particular domain of my life. I think that's really good to make that distinction between the challenge goals and the routine goals and the discipline goals. And so, for example, I might have this year um, a challenge goal or a one-off goal is getting married. Mm -hmm. But a routine goal is that Yvonne and I spend one day a week with each other. We have our our rive-on day that we call it. But we go out and we do something. It's just about us two, us talking about the future, doing some sort of shared activity. Or in the domain of being, I might have routine goals, which are things like journaling every day or meditating every day. And then a challenge goal might be to do a, a pilgrimage or a long walk. You know, I'm talking like a 10 day I've been talking about doing the the Camino in Spain, the mm. the long pilgrimage walk to one of the uh, one of the churches. Okay. Speaking of pilgrimage, I've always wanted to make a pilgrimage to Mecca. Would I be? I would not be allowed because I'm not Muslim, huh? And you can they, become if Muslim I, if I presented myself as Muslim. What do you need to do to become Muslim? I don't know. Do you, you know? Probably need to go to a mosque and find out. <laughs> Yeah, do I just need to accept Allah and say Allah is the one and Muhammad is his prophet? Possibly. Cool, I could become Muslim. I mean, there is a, there is like a, a an Islamic passport that you get. And then interesting. Oh wow, that you can actually signify I'm, I'm literally Islamic. Cuz see that's very tempting because at least right now in the Christian worlds, you won't, you know, you're you're not in danger to getting your head chopped off in most areas of the Christian world in Christianity. But if I wanted to travel in the Islamic worlds, it'd be very useful mm -hmm. to have an Islamic passport. You know what I'm saying? Plus, I, I don't really object to any of the overall views of Islam. They all seem very great when you look at the way the great mystic teachers of Islam teach it. Obviously, there's fundamentalist sects, and that's not what I'm talking about here. You know, terrible stuff happening in Israel right now. It's just terrible how they pollute religion. But this brings us back to the idea of the four core domains. Because if we're pushing all these domains forward, then we're, you know, the whole humanity will increase. Let's face it. You know, one of the things that drives people into fundamentalism is they don't have any, any options Poverty, government oppression, right? So that's going to be a conversation for our next podcast, which is going to be political commentary on the world. <laughs> we like to venture off. We won't venture into the political arena any more than we just did. So here's what ends up happening. When you start putting into place the core four, what you'll find is this feeling of overwhelm slowly starts to melt away. As all areas of life begin to improve, You'll find that your bank your bank account improves. It then fills up with ability to buy healthier foods or be able to invest in health experiences or have a personal trainer, ultimately buying yourself more time, more peace, more time to focus on your individual genius. So this is not just a nice to have. This is a non-negotiable if you want to live your best life as a powerful human being. I think it's... It's kind of like thinking, we use, we're talking about power, right? And if we think about ourselves as batteries, and we're rechargeable batteries, and that we need to have a routine or a process of checking in with all these four domains to make sure that our battery is filled up with power. And that there are also things that we can engage in that suck away our power. They suck away our energy, and we can dissipate it. And when we start thinking about if we kind of start getting rid of the whole idea of time management and we start living out of an operating system based on the core four, which is a root, which is about routines and energy management, really power management. Fantastic. This is a much more practical way of dealing with the, the anxiety that comes from poor time management because we're trying to fix something all the time. Now, well, mm, and, time management yeah. is often in a mm. time management itself is coming out of a place of kind of scarcity. We're running yes. out. Yes. And it's and the and the more that we look at the tools that we've got for time management, the more stressed that we become. And Ryan, do you ever find this is the case? Like, 
it's not so much the case. I'm more aware of it now, so I do it less. But certainly in the past, when one area of my life wasn't working as well or when I was having scarce in that area, I would pour more of my time and energy into that area, which would then destabilize the other areas. Mm-hmm. And so it would actually exacerbate the problem. It would actually make it worse instead of better. Because now my other areas are starting to get out of out of sync and I'm getting more exhausted and more more worn out, more burned out instead of filling myself up with power. Yeah. So if you as our listener, if you'd like to live a more powerful life and you like an operating system that's both personal as well as something to power your business success, you know what to do next. Head over to smartpracticemethod.com. Attend one of our weekly free webinars where we talk about Smart Practice Method, some of the biggest challenges that architects face running a small architectural practice. We talk about the four main myths of architectural practice and the solutions to these myths, including four critical moves that you must do in your architectural practice, as well as the pillars of what we call Smart Practice. So with that, we bid you adieu. Ryan. Carpe Thanks DM. very much. And that's a wrap. Oh yeah, one more thing. If you haven't already, head on over to iTunes and leave a review. We'd love to read your name out here on the show. Have you ever had trouble finding an architectural photographer who could really make your project shine? Today's episode is sponsored by renowned architectural photographer Tobin Davies. Tobin Davies eliminates the hassle by traveling to your location to create the stunning photographs your project deserves, and we are happy to support him here on the Business of Architecture podcast. Visit TobinDavies.com or BayawayPhotos.com to book a shoot in less than 10 minutes and ask about the special offer for Business of Architecture podcast listeners. Again, that's TobinDavies.com or BayawayPhotos.com. The views expressed on the show by my guests do not represent those of the host, and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract, bond, or commitment, except to help you conquer the world. Carpe diem.